Hello students, today we will be doing the second chapter of book 1 that is solutions. We will study about solutions, what solutions are. In the last lecture we have already done about the concentrations, different concentration expressions, their meaning, their dimensions. In today's class we will be doing some phenomena like uh, first we will be talking about the solution of a gas in a liquid. So we will see solution. solution of a gas in a liquid that means a gas is dissolved in a liquid solvent first we'll see the factors that affects the solubility of a gas in a liquid so in that the first point we have got is the type of gas I can write these are the factors affecting solubility of a gas factors affecting solubility of a gas so the type of gas well in this we know that like dissolves like so polar gases like HCl are more soluble in polar solvents like water non-polar gases like CO2 are less soluble in polar solvents like water they are more soluble in non-polar solvents like carbon tetrachloride carbon disulfide methane liquid methane likewise so we can say since like dissolves like polar gases like HCl are more soluble in polar solvents like water and non-polar gases like CO2 are more soluble in non-polar solvents polar gases are more soluble in polar solvents and non-polar gases they are more soluble in non-polar solvents like CO2 the second factor is the effect of temperature effect of temperature well if we talk about the solubility of a gas in a liquid it is exothermic and reversible process so we can say gas plus solvent will give you solution plus heat and this is a reversible process so you if you increase the temperature the equilibrium will shift in the backward direction that is if you increase the heat the equilibrium is going to shift in the backward direction hence on increasing temperature the solubility of a gas decreases so on increasing temperature the solubility of gas decreases and that's why many times some questions they are asked like why we serve carbonated beverages chilled 
if carbonated beverages they are chilled they are cooled they are at low temperature the solubility of carbon dioxide will be more because of decreasing temperature the solubility of gas increases likewise a question is asked why aquatic animals are more comfortable in winters in winters due to lower temperature more oxygen is dissolved in water so it becomes easier for them to breathe whereas in summer the content of oxygen decreases therefore breathing becomes difficult for them the third and the most important one is the effect of pressure effect of pressure here we will study about henry's law and according to this law the solubility of a given mass of a gas is in a liquid is directly proportional to the pressure of the gas is directly proportional to the pressure of the gas now suppose i have a cylinder like this this is a cylinder i have got which is fitted with a air tight piston and it has got a liquid inside say water on top of this liquid you have a gas suppose here you have got some gas if you increase the pressure if you bring this piston down and you increase the pressure the solubility of the gas will increase according to henry's law so according to henry's law the solubility of a given mass of a gas in a liquid is directly proportional to its pressure we can say pa is directly proportional to ka where pa is the pressure of the gas and ka is the mole fraction of the gas in the liquid if we remove proportionality we can write pa is equal to kh into ka where kh is known as henry's constant this is henry's constant different gases have different value of henry's constant and for a particular gas the value of henry's constant is constant the uh, we um, here we can say the solubility of a given mass of a gas is inversely proportional is inversely proportional to the value of henry's constant so higher the value of henry's constant lesser will be the solubility the question comes to our mind why it is like that let us have a look at that if i am saying pa is equal to kh into ka if gas a is in the pure state then ka will be equal to 1 that is if ka is equal to 1 then we can say kh 
is equal to P A because chi A is equal to 1. But we know one thing that if chi A is equal to 1, the gas is in the pure state. So if chi A is equal to 1, then P A is equal to P A naught. Hence we can say what is Henry's constant? It is the pressure of the gas in the pure state. So if the value of Henry's constant is more, that means the pressure of the gas in the pure state is high. And if its pressure in the pure state is high, the gas is more volatile. If the gas is more volatile, its solubility is lesser. So more volatile gases are less soluble and less volatile gases are more soluble. We have got three different applications of this Henry's law, which are given in your textbook. The first one is the application, application regarding solubility of CO2 in carbonated beverages. That is if we talk about uh, cold drink like uh, any, cold, any fruit juice or any cold drink or um, any alcoholic drink also which are aerated drinks which have got some CO2 inside them. We notice one thing that the CO2 is filled in them at high pressure because if you maintain high pressure the solubility of the gas will be more. That's why. The second is the second is application for scuba divers why their tanks they in the air in their tanks or the oxygen in their tanks is diluted with helium because they suffer from a condition known as bends what are bends we'll see that well when these deep sea divers they move deep inside the ocean the pressure around them increases and when they breathe in air the assimilation of the gas also increases. Normally we assimilate oxygen. When they are deep inside the ocean, they breathe in air. So their lungs, they are full of air. That means nitrogen is also there. Along with oxygen, nitrogen is also there. Oxygen gets assimilated, but along with oxygen, nitrogen also gets assimilated in the blood because of high pressure of ocean surrounding them. And due to this high pressure, due to this assimilation, Though nitrogen has got some, some toxic effects, nitrogen it is going to show some toxic effects. That is there, but the, since solubility of nitrogen has increased in the blood, initially they will not suffer from anything till the time they are deep inside the ocean. The problem starts when they start moving up, when they start coming back. As they will start coming back, the pressure surrounding them will decrease. So the solubility of nitrogen will also decrease and they will get the, those small bubbles of nitrogen in their bloodstream like we get bubbles of carbon dioxide in cold drinks when we open them. So this is a very painful condition. It is known as bends and because of them many a time many deep sea divers they die also. So these are bends. After that we will talk about the third application that is anoxia. As we talked about deep sea divers, like them if we talk about uh, mountaineers, when they start climbing up, when they start moving up, the atmosphere ab above them decreases. And when the atmosphere ab above them decreases, its pressure also decreases. Pressure decreases, so the assimilation of oxygen also decreases. Although they will breathe in, the oxygen will be there in the lungs. But the solubility of that oxygen in the blood will be lesser. Due to that, their uh, vital organs will get lesser amount of oxygen, like their brain will get lesser oxygen, that will result to convulsions, confusions. This condition is known as nausea. And here we, in these three factors, we see the basic application of Henry's law. So this is what Henry's law is. Next, we'll move on. I'll tell you about vapor pressure also. So next, we'll see. vapor pressure what is a vapor pressure suppose I have taken a closed container 
there's a opening in this closed container this is a closed container I have got in this closed container I have fitted a barometer which will indicate the pressure inside the container and suppose here I have got liquid in a liquid we have two different type of molecules that is the molecule at the surface molecule at the surface and molecule in the bulk the molecule in the bulk will get attractive forces from all other molecules but the molecule at the surface will have these attractive forces only from the surrounding and the molecules which are below it so we can say the force of attraction on the molecule at the surface is lesser as compared to the molecule in the bulk as a result of this these molecules many a time they come into the gaseous state so every liquid has some vapors of it on top of the liquid will have some gas on top of the liquid and we know PV or we can say PV is equal to NRT so we know pressure is directly proportional to number of moles of the gas as the number of mole of the gas will increase the pressure will also increase it would reach a maximum value where it will stop this pressure is known as vapor pressure so we can define it as it is the pressure exerted by the vapors of a liquid on top of it when the rate of evaporation is equal to the rate of condensation so it is the pressure exerted by the vapors of a liquid on top of the liquid when the rate of evaporation is equal to the rate of condensation this is what vapor pressure is now we'll see what are the factors on which the vapor pressure depends or what is the effect of solute on the vapor pressure of a solvent.